Hey guys, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting, jaw-dropping, spine-tingling Max MSP adventure. Uh, today's adventure, we will be uh, journeying. This metaphor is so stupid. We're going to talk about MIDI Learn. We're going to talk about Ableton Live. And um, basically, we're going to talk about how to deal with this problem of when you're taking uh, MIDI from Max and sending it to an environment like Live, and uh, you have multiple MIDI things happening at once, and so if you try to learn MIDI Learn, it, it's hard to make it work. And I'm going to show you how to do it uh, the way I do it. And as always, consider this not necessarily a tutorial, but also um, a here's how I solve this problem. If you have a better way, then please, by all means, let me know because... You know, I use this myself. This is a, a technique that I use myself, and so it would be, you know, hugely helpful for me to have a, a better, more robust way of doing it. So here's the problem. Let's say that you had in Max something like a picked control. No, not a picked control, a picked slider. Yeah, a picked slider, and this is giving you access to a dope XY pad like this. And you can see if you hook this up, let's see, this is probably, yeah, the horizontal value, and over here is the vertical value. And if you hook these up like so, you can see as I drag this little thing around, then the bottom left there is my X position, and the Y is my uh, Y position. And just for reference, this is called Picked Slider. I'll put this up here so it's very obvious what that's called. So, uh, well, yeah. Anyway, so there's the Picked Slider. And now what you might want to do is send this MIDI channel to live, and send this MIDI channel also to live. And so you might do something clever like make a MIDI parse. Ah, uh, no, MIDI format. MIDI format will let you take this uh, data that's coming from Max and send it to a MIDI out object. It basically just formats the data in Max into a, a format that uh, MIDI out can understand. And in MIDI out, I will add the message here from Max1. This sets it so that MIDI out is automatically configured uh, to send its MIDI to this device from Max1. Um, and of course you could always double click on MIDI out and select form from Max1 instead of doing it this way, but this way it's uh, going to be sending to that device um, automatically. So anyway, uh, back here I've unlocked the patch again and let's see, poly key pressure control change. Uh, control change is expecting a list of the controller number followed by the value. And so for this one we might do uh, say controller value 10 or here's a better way we could do this um, what's a sexy way we could do this a sexy way we could do this is with a uh, funnel a list funnel object maybe no 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 funnel and funnel takes a number of inlets for offset 10 oh this is cool oh check this out okay this is gonna be really cool so if I send this uh, MIDI into this inlet and this MIDI into this inlet you can see that when I tweak this knob, the value that comes out is going to be 10 followed by the X position. Um, but the value that comes out of this guy, if I do a route 10, 11, what's coming out, oh, what's coming out of this funnel uh, are two different messages. Uh, one message that's coming out is the uh, over here you can see this is the X position, so there's a list that is uh, 10 followed by 45 coming through this funnel, but also 11 followed by 66 coming out of this outlet. That's because funnel is tagging the um, what's coming into it with the inlet number 0, 1, 2, 3, and this 10 here tells it to offset by 10, so instead of being 0, 1, 2, 3, it's 10, 11, 12, 13, which is super handy. It means I can actually hook up another one of these um, no problem. And now I have uh, two additional MIDI controls, X, Y here, uh, just like that, without having to do any kind of setup. And it, it's super easy to extend this funnel just by adding uh, more inlets. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so I can connect these to control change, and that's all good. And now I have two MIDI controllers here, two MIDI X, Y pads in Max. Cool. This concludes the max portion of the program. Let's switch over to live. And full confession, I tried to do this in logic beforehand, and I don't know if I just suck at logic or my brain and logic are like fundamentally um, yeah, just at odds with each other. Like if, if my grandparents and logic's grandparents fought some horrible like racial land war or something, but we just do not get along. Logic and I are just blood feud 
enemies. I can't explain it, and I could not make it work. So I fell back to live. Um, nice, comfortable territory that I know. So let's say, for example, you had some, uh, I don't know, something going on in live. I'm going to use simpler bass. Let's drop some analog bass in here. I'm sure you have much sexier, cooler uh, presets and all kinds of VSTs and stuff, but you know, what can I say? I'm a, I'm a simple man with simple tastes. And you'll see, as always, the purposes of this, these tutorials, as you're about to discover, is both to emphasize my... Uh, both to demonstrate how to do cool stuff in Max, and to emphasize that I have the, um, the, the musical capacity of a uh, semi-conscious drunk gibbon. Um, which will illustrate by way of this tediously bad techno bass here. Oh, man. Uh, let's try, let's see, I don't even know what this is going to sound like. Oh, I know it'll sound bad, but beyond that I can't tell you much. Alright, what does this sound like? Perfect. <laughs> okay, great, that's what we're going with. No, I know it doesn't sound good, but, you know. Perfect. So now, supposing on top of that, you wanted to add a whole bunch of effects to cover up the fact that it sounds like garbage, you would come down to audio effects, and I don't know, dude, let's put in um, uh, Redux and Overdrive and then uh, Compressor. How's about that? And for Compressor, let's use the... Uh, let's use the... I don't know, generic compressor? Yeah, perfect. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Very happy with that. Uh, so now you can see we've got a whole bunch of MIDI controls here that we could juice around with. We can change how hard we're downsampling this thing. We can change the drive. Uh, you know, we can change our filter here. And these are all things that we might want to control from Max. But if I suppose, suppose that we push uh, MIDI Learn, and then say grab this drive control and then start tweaking this XY pad in Max, you can see we got a problem. Uh, control change 10 was the first thing to come in here, but maybe I want to control it with control change 11, which is my XY. Uh, sorry, which is the Y of my XY. So now I'm in trouble, right? I, uh, I want to do uh, MIDI learn on a specific control channel, uh, but because I'm sending two at once, uh, one's kind of stepping on top of the other. So how do we fix that? Well, for now, let's come out of MIDI learn in live, and then back in Max, what we're going to do is make a gate object. Uh, we'll put a gate in here, and um, what we're going to do, uh, no, not a gate, sorry, a uh, route pass. Route pass is the secret sauce that is going to make this all work, man. All we have to do is throw this route pass in the middle here. And now with an integer box, we can tell uh, live which channel we want to ignore. Uh, so basically what we do is we say, okay, I'm now in a mode where I want to MIDI learn. And so I only want to hear about control channel 11. Now if I jump back to live, I can delete this MIDI controller here. And now let's try once again to learn the down sample here. So I click on down sample, switch back to max, tweak my MIDI controller here. And now you can see that even though I'm sending X and Y data here, and even though I'm therefore sending control channel changes on MIDI controller number 10 and 11, only 11 shows up here because this root pass is filtering just for 11. In this way now, if I want to learn something for 10, I put a 10 in here, I'm still in MIDI learn, I click drive, and then I tweak max, and now I've learned a different note control for the uh, for drive. So drive is now 10 and down sample is 11. Turn off MIDI mode, start this playing again, come back to max, and of course now we have to take this route pass out of the equation. Uh, we could do that like so. And that, oops. Now we should be able to tweak this and get some cool stuff happening. Excellent! And that is basically it. You could make this a little bit sexier, perhaps, by turning on a gate, adding a gate here, um, and then maybe a U menu. Let's stop live for a second. Adding a U menu that lets you switch between, um, say, perform 
and MIDI learn modes. Okay. Uh, now we can do plus one. So this is the item number chosen. It indexes from zero, but gate wants a number between um, zero and uh, indexes from one rather. And so in this way, let's see, we can just hook this thing up to the gate. Uh, and then if we're in MIDI learn mode, we send those to the route pass. And if not, we send them straight through to uh, from max one to the MIDI format and to from max one. So let's see, we have the gate sitting in here and we're telling the gate whether we're interested in um, perform mode or MIDI learn mode. And then based on that, we either send things through to root, uh, root pass or straight through. Hopefully that makes sense. I think it's pretty clear. So now you can see that, um, so for example, if we were in MIDI learn mode and this route pass is engaged, now when we tweak X, we're only gonna see changes to the X parameter and not the Y parameter. You can see here maybe in live that when I uh, tweak this max knob in MIDI learn mode, uh, nothing is happening for the, the down sample control, but if I'm in perform mode, you do see something happening for the down sample control uh, because in perform mode, the things coming from this funnel are going straight through here, and in MIDI learn mode, uh, things have to go through this root pass. But in any case, so now I can say root pass 12, and then switch to MIDI learn mode. MIDI, uh, let's learn the tone, and then MIDI, let's filter for channel 13, and now let's learn uh, uh, the filter frequency, and cool, now that's learned. And now we've got these two channels. Switch back to perform mode and play. And now, of course, it would be trivial to hook up some kind of MIDI controller in here and have your pads controlled from Max. So there you go. This is a very simple and hopefully straightforward look into how you can control uh, how to handle MIDI mapping from Max to Live. Uh, hopefully that was informative and useful. Uh, certainly useful, if not necessarily as entertaining or as... Um, goofy as some of these usually are, but what can I say? Sometimes these are going to be pragmatic. Uh, and just so you know, more of the um, visual Gantz graph type stuff is, is upcoming. Um, the struggle there is I kind of have to do a few of those in a row. Uh, I'm trying to build up, say, four or five of those, and then I'll release them one day at a time. Uh, just because of the nature of where that sort of tutorial series is going, I have to kind of build up a, a few of them and then, and then um, take it from there. But in any case, thanks for watching. Have a phenomenal time tweaking knobs and making noises, and uh, I will see you next time. Take it easy, guys.